Before we begin this video, here's a quick warning that there are spoilers. If you have not read The Puppet Carver, then it wouldn't be very smart to continue, would it? Oh, and don't go clicking random videos that you don't know anything about. <laughs> um, yeah, that's just advice for the future. Anyway, let's get on with the video. What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another episode of Pinocchio Zone. You guessed it, today we're going to be talking about the significance of the story, The Puppet Carver. When I read this story at first, it seemed a little bit random, but since then I've gone back and I've reread it a little bit, and I have thought about it, actually, with my brain this time, and I think I understand it now. So before we talk about the significance of the Puppet Carver, just remember to subscribe to me, as I'm going to be making some more videos like this on the other stories in this book, books in the future, and all the books in the past, so uh, subscribe for that. I'm also really close to a thousand subscribers, a thousand? Ten thousand subscribers. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm only like a hundred away, so subscribe, get me there before the end of the month. Uh, and yeah, thank you for your support, uh, and let's continue the video. The Puppet Carver, I would say, is a story about a boss called Jack, who uh, has a pizzeria chain called the Pizza Playground. And this place is slacking big time. Um, he's losing money, he's got no customers, and uh, yeah, all the animatronics are malfunctioning. And funnily enough, uh, the animatronic that was mentioned was an animatronic pig, which I actually want to stop and talk about a little first. This already sounds a lot like Pizzeria Simulator, right? There's this guy that we're, we're following who is essentially building a pizzeria. Not only that, but there's a pig animatronic. Sounds a lot like Pig Patch, right? Now, it's only a small theory with not that much evidence, but I'd like to say this is almost like an origin story to the mediocre melodies. Um, because if you think about it, they kind of came out of nowhere in the sixth game. One big theory of mine is that they were created by another company who kind of wanted to steal the Freddy Fazbear iconic um, like animatronics and make them into a new style, a, f a fruitier style, if you will. They're very similar to the main crew, but also very different. Uh, it's a bit like how all the social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and even YouTube have stolen the stories feature from Snapchat. Uh, <laughs> the world. Of course, things that debunk this theory are the fact that they appear in the Happiest Day mini game, weirdly, with the masks. Or even the fact that they're in Ultimate Custom Night is kind of weird. Um, but I do believe that this is sort of an origin story, if you will, to the mediocre melodies. So we get introduced to two of Jack's employees, Porter and Sage. Uh, so Sage is an aspiring writer, remember that. While Porter has created uh, a machine, essentially, that takes wood and makes it into a puppet. Now Jack, their boss, is a bit of an ass. Uh, <laughs> he's rude to all of his employees and doesn't pay them enough. Um, so when Porter asks to show Jack his machine that could help out the pizzeria, he shows him but unfortunately it breaks down in the process and then all of his employees get fired. <laughs> now to this point I want to warn you to take everything in this story with a pinch of salt. Um, so everything in this story so far has been very normal but it's about to get weird. In the night Jack hears a weird sound coming from the machine so he goes to investigate essentially. When he's inside the door shuts behind him classic horror and all these saws and blades are coming down on him uh, and then there's a massive bang. Jack then leaves the machine completely fine and he's like oh, I feel better about life now. He essentially feels thankful that he's still alive after even after all that uh, and then goes out and says thank you and apologizes to all of these people that he's hurt in his life. While going out to do nice things, he hears footsteps behind him and he hides inside an abandoned office where he is cornered by a being made of pink slime and organs. Now what is this being, you may ask? Say it with me. Fazgoo. Hopefully you've read the story, he told me everything. If you haven't, the story ends with a load of science students essentially getting their lives replaced with duplicates of themselves in the form of this matter called Fazgu. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to be talking much about that today in particular, but if you want me to do a whole video on, I guess, what we've 
uh, not what we found. Uh, he told me everything uh, and what Fazgu is and what it means for the FNAF lore. Then let me know in the comments below because I'd really love to do that. Anyway, this Fazgu reaches out to Jack. Uh, and at once, he feels all of the pain that he has caused to other people in their lives. Uh, then it stops and the monster goo, the, the goo monster disappears. I didn't quite disappear there, but it, 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 I don't know. I'll edit it so that I disappeared or something, I don't know. The story then ends with Jack rehiring Porter, who works on building a new machine that doesn't malfunction, and he rehires Sage, who d throws away the old machine. But when he looks in the waste tray, he sees the remnants of Fazgu. Um... And that's it. <laughs> now you can imagine that I was very confused after reading this. I'm sure a lot of you were too. Especially if you read my audiobook because I had no idea what was going on so I couldn't explain it to the people watching. <laughs> I found out though the way to understand this story is to find the turning point. Because uh, there were two Jacks. Yes, one of them, one side of Jack was really horrible uh, and the other wasn't. It was very nice. But you need to understand that they're actually two different people or they're the same person, but Fazgu. <laughs> Something happened in the machine that created a duplicate of Jack, and I believe it was the work of the Fazgu, just like we saw in the other Fazgu story, uh, he told me everything. I keep going to say what we found, why? <laughs> the Fazgu replaced him, and now he's a better person. But he's also dead, um, so it's, it's a bit like Schrodinger's cat. <laughs> Schrodinger's Jack. Oh no, Schrodinger's Jack. Ah! Oh hey, good question. <laughs> I also want to know the answer to... What? Yeah, what even is this story? <laughs> well, I actually think that talking about the other part of this story might come in handy here. Porter's machine was actually called the Puppet Carver. Um, hence why this story as a whole is called The Puppet Carver. However, the machine was based off a book that Sage wrote, because remember he's an author, called The Puppet Carver. So, uh, yeah. A puppet carver, Porter, makes a machine, The Puppet Carver, based on Sage's book, The Puppet Carver, about a puppet carver, inside the story, The Puppet Carver, in the book, The Puppet Carver. You can say that again! That's Puppet Carverception! So Sage has a story called The Puppet Carver uh, that we actually get to read in this story. Called The Puppet We're introduced to a wooden puppet called Sylvester who wishes to be real. And you can already see that this has many connections to the classic story of Pinocchio, who is also a wooden puppet that is created by a puppet carver master person and he wants to be a real boy this puppet has three senses he has the sense of sight he's able to hear and he can smell so you can see right there that he has three out of the five senses the other two missing are taste and touch the thing that sylvester wants uh to be a real boy i guess is touch he wants to be able to feel things so he pays the fixer uh, which is a machine that gives him loads of pain, but fortunately the sense of touch. Um, he could then feel everything and it ends happily with his newborn daughter in his hands. Even that's kind of a weird story. <laughs> it's kind of like the ending of In the Flesh. The reason I think this story is important is because it shows what it takes to be a human being. Uh, the book is a parallel to the story that the book is in. <laughs> That probably made no sense, but uh, it's mind belonging. Yeah, if you think about it, um, it makes sense. Jack starts off a horrible person to be around. Some may even say he's inhumane. Um, and he goes into a machine and becomes a better person. Once again, you may say he quite literally goes through loads of pain and then receives the sense of feeling things, feeling human emotion and solidifying it into his life. Of course, the twist is that he's just a better clone of himself um, who has taken over his life. That's at least my take on the mini Puppet Carver story inside the Puppet Carver. I'd also love to hear what your theories are on, on all of that. Overall, what is the meaning of this story? 
And what did it teach us? I think you can take away a lot from this story, uh, but only very loosely. Um, you could say it teaches what it takes to be human and that people like William Afton are like monsters because they have no sense of feeling anything emotionally. I've heard theories like Fazgu is actually remnant and this story represents the before and afters of Michael Afton uh, getting scooped. Um, which I think is a cool theory, but I don't believe it 100%. I genuinely think that this story is supposed to give us a little bit more on what Fazgu is and what it does. Uh, I don't know how it's going to fit into the FNAF universe, whether it is actually Remnant or if it's something completely different. But we've seen it twice now and I think it's significant in some way. To finish, I want to quickly mention a small connection I may or may not have found. In the Sylvester story, there's an entire part that's completely irrelevant, okay? It has no bearing on the story whatsoever, where he interacts with these kittens that are in a cardboard box. Now, I don't want to be that guy, but that sounds very similar to the Candy Cadet story where five kittens get killed by a snake and stitched together and put in a small cardboard box. I know it's probably nothing but an Easter egg, uh, if it is something, but it's cool if it was a, a, an intentional connection. Anyway, this video is getting long, uh, so I will see you in another one. <laughs> Hopefully next time we're able to talk about coils uh, and jump for tickets, so that's, that's exciting. Yeah, make sure you subscribe for that video and I will see you later. Goodbye.